my greetings to all on this uh, wonderful platform. It gives me so much of pleasure to hear the young minds. When I was uh, in this particular hour, listening to Sakshi, listening to Agam Mohan, listening to Kushmita, and listening to Janvi, I thank Arpit for actually having me at the last. My God. These young, dynamic leaders, thank God I was chosen to summarize and to come in the last because I would have made myself so dwarf in front of these great leaders of today. Not only I get inspired when I look at these young men and the young girls, I also feel proud of the fact the globe and my country are so safe. We are leaving them in the hands of this responsible young leaders. While contemplating in the morning, what would I do? How would I start? And you made my job a little more difficult when uh, I heard all the four speakers. I was making my own plan. How would I, how would I start my talk? And suddenly, I was reminded of a very highly successful book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind, a, a Brief History of Humankind. You would be surprised what has this engrossing read by Yuva Noah Harari to do with my talk. The very zest of this book that we evolved from Sapiens and the underlying fact that man is a social animal prompted me not to miss out on mentioning this book. Ever since these sapiens in isolation and aloof. Since March 2020, what has the world looked like? The very essence of human touch and presence of physical beings almost vanished. Confined to enclosed spaces in own homes. Attending long day virtual meetings on the platform like this. Made us face the brunt of being in isolation. And consequently, we lost a great deal of what made us the humans. Distinctive from other species. Heightened anxiety, hopelessness, insomnia, sadness has been sadly seen in every generation, right from toddler to an old. Restaurants and public places of recreation on reopening have been thronged by people, not because the COVID fear is over, but because each one of us has craved endlessly to be surrounded by evolved sapiens. The very magical touch of human laughter interacting in person has been, has begun to sweep away from the gloominess which has engulfed our lives for almost a year now. But the un uncertainty looms large. And this brings me to the fact that the mental health and its well-being has been brushed under the carpet for a very long time. And now we need to bring it back on the table. Do whatever makes you happy. Surround yourself with people who inspire, who can see the difference. We all have grown up listening to that story of monkey and the cap seller, what did we learn from that? We learned from that, that monkeys are the best in imitating. That means we learn by what we see and not what we say, or what we are told rather than what we are seeing. In simple meaning, we learn by walk your talk. 
there's a very wrong conception which has been developed. Mental health is the absence of mental disorder. Whereas mental health is not the absence of mental disorder. It is holistic well-being. Need to look after ongoing wellness and happiness. Two words which are very, very important and which are the keys to success are happiness and joy. If these two words are missing, there is no learning. And if there's no learning, because there is not right in emotional state, we need to get back to the core of the problem. But before we do that, we must understand what are the factors which are influencing the well being. Physical, psychological, social, cognitive, emotional. But there are protective factors such as skills, resources, strengths. Now, when I'm asked to say how do how do in Chandbag at the Doon School, we counterattack this. Well, there are plenty. I was very happy when Kushmita said. We are only talking about well-being in mental, but more important is physical because in today's time, when we are isolated and there is more of a social and physical distancing, we need to keep in consideration the physical aspect also along with the mental aspect. The culture at the Dune School naturally provides these protective factors with dedicated wellness. There's a wellness team and there are counselors. A very recently conceptualized club which has come up called the Mind Club for holistic well-being with increased student engagement. And let me tell you, girls and boys, this is the Mind Club which is by the children, for the children, and of the children. The very essence is democratic. Another very important aspect of what I want to really put into the floor here to think is the wonderful relationship between the teacher and the student in the Dune School. I'm here to make a remark that this is a bond which remains for lifelong. Every teacher is a mentor, is an informal counselor, is a friend, is a guide, which is visible in the tutorial system, what we have in the school. These tutorials, which are in the classrooms, houses, fields, the comfort and openness with which the child can communicate with his teachers adds to the ethos of a healthy school. Nature plays a very important role. Nature is a positive influence on well-being. And all those who have seen the Chandbagh and the beautiful organic campus, the boys here are in a close association with nature, both on the campus and off the campus. Off the campus, when they go for midterms or they go for the treks, etc., this contributes to the overall well being and resilience. Another aspect what I see in the Dune School is the student-student bonding, a brotherhood, camaraderie. That is another emotional buffer and protective factor. 
something seemingly as small as masters having meals with the boys it also engulfs a lot of strong bonding and influence on the child's mind much of the learning in the dune school happens with observation more than the classroom learning the learning is actually outdoors i always say what a child in the chandbag learns in the classroom is 20% but what he really learns that is how to live and how to demonstrate how he has been raised 80% is in learning is outside the classroom mental health physical health when you are strong and that's what i keep talking about the resilience shown by the young minds in this difficult era adds to the leadership and that's what is taught in the uh, dune school leadership program i mark the words of the founder headmaster of the dune school to attract and develop exceptional boys and teachers from all backgrounds to serve a meritocratic india transform boys into educated men inspire them to be just and ethical citizens train them to be wise and principled leaders and prepare them to enter one of the strongest fraternities for life this is the very purpose and the very way and the way of life a dosco is raised in the dune school a plenty of initiatives have been taken where leaderships are concerned in chandpark a long process to find out the right attributes to the leadership today when i was hearing the young minds speak their heart out i am in no doubt at all and let me tell you the success mantra for any leader lies in effective communication which was evident from the fact the young girls and boys demonstrated not only they were backed up by a content but excellent communication skills this is what tedx gives you a platform i must congratulate mams for having given this opportunity to the children to showcase not only their talent and their oratory skills but to give them a platform to voice their opinion to voice their minds with this i just like to conclude by congratulating all the speakers of today who addressed us educated us and made us more wiser than what we were before wish we you all the good luck and may you take our country and the globe from glory to glory god bless you all